making plans for Nigel. This boy is electric. Morning everyone, it's the 2nd of February and what a great morning it is. This is our sunrise this morning, we're having some great weather here in Norfolk. And uh, yeah, January, January's been a very, very odd month because, well obviously you know, the start of January felt a bit like December, but it was really sunny. So we lost all the cloudiness, we lost all the dull days that we had in December and the start of January was extremely bright, so much so that it felt that January had to be a record month. But then it just, it stopped. And it went dull again, like it was in December, and we had, um, I don't know, seven to ten days of complete darkness almost, and no solar at all, which suddenly made January look like it was going to be a write-off, and it was going to be one of the worst Januaries we've ever, ever had. So that roller coaster ride of, it's brilliant, it's rubbish, was going either way. Which way was it going to go, and how was the month going to end? And luckily for us, we had just a few clear sunny days, which absolutely rocketed our kilowatt hours for the month to a level where it's the second best we've ever had when we compare some of the uh, arrays individually. And actually, it's the best January we've ever had at 352 kilowatt hours. So we'll get into the detail of that in a moment. But the big thing to talk about here is, for January, this January's solar generation was actually higher than last February's. So last February, February is always better than January. So for us, this January to beat last February sort of tells you that last February must have been rubbish or this January has been really, really good. And it's been the second best that we've had so far. But 350 kilowatt hours is getting much closer to the magic 500 kilowatt hours that I believe I need to be more self-sufficient. If I had 500 kilowatt hours in January, I'd have a net zero bill. I'd probably be in credit. It's enough to run our house, to run our heating, to run everything with what we could potentially export and get paid for, as well as what we're actually importing from the grid. And January's been a great month for watching the shade because the sun's so low, the trees are getting in the way, the, the day starts later and ends earlier, so the shade is more of an issue. So I've been watching it and I really think I would benefit now in winter from having um, optimizers on my garage solar panels, the three that I've got there, and my garden solar panels. I've currently got all six garden panels connected on one string, but the front two are nearly always free of shade and the back four aren't, so I'm always losing out generation on those front two at least. So I could either move the front two to a separate string or I could optimize them. So there's definitely some work I can do to improve my solar generation. So that's one thing I'm going to be looking at this year at some point, um, optimizing and improving our generation. Maybe, maybe not installing more solar panels. I think I've got enough. <laughs> um, I've got enough uh, for the amount of energy we generate and the having a credit on the bill. But, you know, can you ever have enough solar panels? Anyway, so there you go. There's the introduction to the month. It's been a fascinating month and... Yeah, it's, it's a really optimistic feeling, feeling that the days are stretching, feeling that the sun's getting higher, seeing that the highest kilowatt power used to be like 5.8, 5.9 kilowatts over December, and now we're seeing 6, 6.4 in the middle of January, and then at the end of January it was 6.9, and now I've seen 7 and 7.6, something's just clearing the shade just enough to bring some of the solar panels really online, the right angles are coming in, and we're now uh, hitting 7.4, 7.6 kilowatts on the perfect sunny day, just for a few fleeting moments. But the power's coming, the power's getting there, and that's a really optimistic feeling. And I, and I love looking at the transition across the year as to how everything performs so you can appreciate and understand what it's doing and why it's doing it. I like that detail. The best we ever saw was 9. Point, what was it? 9.4, 9.6, something like that, just under 10 kilowatts of generation in the peak summer. So we've got a way to go yet if we're just peaking into the mid sevens and we've got the mid nines to go. There's another two kilowatts of power to come from somewhere. So I'm looking forward to each month seeing how that progresses and how much closer we get to the perfect solar day. But I was very, very happy with one of our days in January, 33 kilowatt hours. I can't believe that we could get 33 kilowatt hours in a day from January. Think of the potential if we had that sort of sunny day every day of January. I mean, I could have 900 kilowatt hours of generation in January, in theory. Um, obviously, it's never going to happen. January is never going to be completely sunny. 
you know, or maybe global warming is going to make it like that. You know, who knows what's going on? But it's very, very interesting to see the potential of these solar arrays, which in January goes from absolute zero, when it's a dark, dull day, where it's raining, etc., to 33 kilowatt hours. That's the range of potential we have. Anyway, let's get over to the stats and share all the great numbers with you, starting with solar generation, which, as I said, was 352 kilowatt hours for the month. 352 kilowatt hours breaks down like this over the month and it's a healthy 12 days there where we had over 15 kilowatt hours and uh, yeah the highest 33 kilowatt hours towards the end of the month. I've rounded up to 353 kilowatt hours on this chart but for 2025 January numbers 164 kilowatt hours is the second best we've had very similar to last year though. Uh, the solar edge, the green there, 94 kilowatt hours. Again, second best uh, we've had so far for January. The garage and gable panels, 45 kilowatt hours. And the new garden solar array, 50 kilowatt hours. In total, 353 rounded up. This is the daily chart for our 3.9 kilowatt array on the roof, south facing, 164 kilowatt hours. Quite a few days, just above 10 kilowatt hours being generated, and the peak just under 15. Daily chart for the garage three panels and gable east facing panels, 45 kilowatt hours. Looks like most of the days were around 3 kilowatt hours generating, with a peak of just over 4. The garden array, six panels, 2.4 kilowatts, continues to just slightly outperform the previous array I discussed, the uh, gable panels and the three panels on the garage roof. So just over three kilowatt hours on the good days, and we're peaking at, that looks like, closer to five kilowatt hours towards the end of the month. So very close in the total number of kilowatt hours, 45 versus 50 on this array. And uh, it does seem so far, since we installed it in September, it's consistently similar similar to that other array. I've yet to obviously see uh, what happens through the March, April, May, June, and I'm hoping it's going to outperform that other array a little bit more. I still can't see the daily chart very clearly from Solar Edge for this array because it includes some made up values the solar edge app is absolutely rubbish it tries to anticipate that we have some extra uh, solar arrays that it doesn't know about and it invents numbers so i can't see accurate numbers for the solar edge array but in total it was 93 kilowatt hours Plugging those numbers into this chart that shows all of the solar arrays and the totals over the last four years. Uh, I like to compare here that it's 350 kilowatt hours. And how does that compare to February and March? So last year, March was 600 kilowatt hours and February was, yeah, last February was less than 350 kilowatt hours. So that was a bad February. February previously, uh, 2023, was over 400, more like 450 to 500 kilowatt hours. So we should have a good uplift in February, um, probably another 100 kilowatt hours. 450 is what I'm going to estimate. Of the 350 kilowatt hours we generated, we exported 238 of them. That's about 67% of our solar generation we exported for credit. So the rest was consumed, and that's the base load of our house during the day. So because we're not consuming all of our solar energy, we do rely heavily on importing from the grid. So in total, that's 655.83 kilowatt hours imported for the month of January, with the highest looking like close to 36 kilowatt hours. The cost of that energy was £45.95, so that excludes the standing charge. But the energy we exported back to the grid, that brought in a credit of £36. But we also had some octopoints for the last couple of months, so I redeemed those for £6.12. That's another credit on the bill, so £42.12 credit um, against a 45.95 bill, just a couple of pounds for the month for our energy, plus the standing charge, of course. Comparing the amount we imported to previous months, it's a little bit higher than other months uh, last year, January, February, a little bit higher than July and August too, but nowhere near as high as November 2023 or what have we got, or October 2024 or December 2024. So, it looks like what we imported, 655 kilowatt hours, was a reasonable amount. 
This chart shows the peak power on a day-by-day -day basis over the month. And as I mentioned earlier, the beginning of the month, we were peaking below 6 kilowatts. And now the last week of January, you can see that there were several days where we peaked well above 6 kilowatts. I'll be watching this chart closely over February to see how many new peaks we get and how much extra power we're going to get as the sun rises higher in the sky and gets stronger. Moving on to hot water and some data from our Mixergy tank. This is showing the percentage of full hot water that we have. And as you can see, towards the end of the month, the change occurred. And basically, I added another 15-hour slot for heating our hot water overnight um, using the My Energy Eddy. And it's a shame it can't do it in five-minute increments because adding 15 is a bit too much. Not having that 15 is a little bit too little and doesn't leave us with enough hot water. So I would like a little bit more granularity and be able to heat it for just 5 or 10 minutes more, and that would then make it perfect. Temperature-wise, it's pretty similar to December. Uh, this chart here, the light blue, the line at the bottom of the graph, is showing our loft temperature. And one, two, three, four, almost five days, it uh, went below zero. So four-ish days, we had a frost outside. And then we had some peaks of 10 degrees as well. So it's a mixed month where it uh, warmed up occasionally, had a few frosts. And that resulted in a little bit of increased heating usage during those frosty mornings. Energy consumption by individual device for the month of January. The Zappi used 176 kilowatt hours. The Shiba air conditioning, our main source of heating, 138 kilowatt hours. The Eddy heating our Mixergy hot water tank uh, overnight, 77 kilowatt hours. The ensuite immersion towel rail used 49 kilowatt hours. The kitchen, including the oven and washing machine, 44 kilowatt hours. Cloakroom immersion radiator, 41 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom infrared mirror, 41 kilowatt hours. The TV, 24 kilowatt hours, rounding up there. The main induction hob, 17 kilowatt hours. The internet hubs that we have, we've got three of them, 14 kilowatt hours in total. Bigger than you'd think. The laundry, that's a dehumidifier, 5.8 kilowatt hours. Some eddy on solar, 5.4 kilowatt hours. And a second dehumidifier, 2.48 kilowatt hours. The ones that stand out to me there, the Zappi was quite low, so we obviously didn't drive too far. Heating costs were quite low. The two cloakroom radiators totaling 80 kilowatt hours is quite surprising. The, yeah, the internet hubs, that's a little bit surprising as well, That but they're on 24 hours a day, so their standby all adds up. And lastly, we've obviously not had any humidity issues at all. There's very little dehumidification happening in January, uh, so we've obviously managed that extremely well. And lastly, our battery state of charge for the month on a day-by-day -day basis. So this is our 30 kilowatt hours of Pylon Tech batteries connected to a Victron inverter charger. And as you can see from this graph, we are not running out of battery at all on any day. In fact, I haven't even gone past 50% in January, so we've got lots more spare capacity. So there's two things to say here. One, we're not running out of battery, which means we're only using cheap rate energy at 7 pence a kilowatt hour, and it's the battery that enables us to do that. The other thing is that spare capacity is there for if the weather got worse, and if I didn't light the log fire at all, and if I have the opportunity of exporting more energy for a better credit with some demand response services, etc. So all of those things are for the future if I need them. I do have an overcapacity of the battery. I couldn't resist buying the extra batteries last year. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the data. Uh, let me know in the comments how you get on wherever you are in the UK or across Europe or the rest of the world. I know a lot of you are not in the UK, so these comparisons are great to see uh, how everyone is getting on in different, com different places in the UK and different places across the world. Take care, all you solo fans, and I look forward to doing more video updates throughout the year. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.